Don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. Okay, we're good. Um, I got a request to uh, make another video from a comment that I read off of my Billy Joe Armstrong How to Solo Like Him video from, uh, I'm sorry if I can't remember your name correctly, but I think it was like Punk Girl 249 or Punk Girl 259, something like that. She said that my lesson was all right, but uh, there were, she couldn't really see my hands while I was playing, and I didn't really go into depth of what he was really doing with his playing. And that's totally understandable. That's totally acceptable. So um, I'm going to upload a different one and take that one down and redo this. Okay, so, uh, when Billy Joe solos, he always picks the blue scale of the keys. It doesn't matter what key is in, major, minor, Mixolydian, Dorian, what have you, any weird-ass key that you can possibly think of, he always plays the blue scale of that key. And what the blue scale is, basically, if you don't know it, is um, it's minor pentatonic with a flat five. So with that tritone going on, if that's your root, you're going to have that note in there. Instead of going, you're going to add in that flat five. And that's like his go-to one for almost every song he's ever played solos to. Uh, the key thing about Billy Joe's playing style is it's very... It's very samey. He uses the same attack mostly for all the songs he's played solos to, with the exceptions of a few. Uh, and if you listen to him enough, you can kind of start catching little nuances that he does while he's playing. And uh, here's some of the styles that he's picked up from some of the guitar players that he's really liked. Uh, one of the biggest influences in his uh, soloing, at least what I hear, is Chuck Berry because there's a lot of his double stops going on, there's a lot of his bending, his, uh, I can't remember, like his comping bending for his own playing that he does until he can think of something else to do. And there's a lot of blue, blue scale walking up and down, and he has a lot of stock riffs that he goes to. And he mainly stays in the same pattern. Even, even if like the chord changes and he follows the chord, he stays in the same pattern, because... Everybody knows and loves that pattern. It's really, it's really fun to play in. Like if he's playing and that's the chord and he's like doing his thing. And then he moves up to an E or down to an E and then he'll just... And he'll just keep the attack going no matter what chord he's on. I apologize if my guitar is out of tune. The strings are very new. And I try to stretch them out as much as possible, but um, this is a bit more of a concept thing rather than just getting the pitches correctly. Fucking battery power. Give me a second. There we go. Okay. Now onto the actual riffs that he's playing. Uh, I'll show you some of the stock things that he does that he usually uses in his solos. He hardly varies these up, and they're, they sound cool. They, they just sound cool. Uh, one of his favorite ones is a Chuck Berry type of thing, and it's very rhythmically uh, the same mostly, but he varies it up. Uh, he'll do three, uh, three, three twos, he'll do uh, straight three, three on fours through the playing, and he'll sometimes mix it up where he just does fours. Uh, but the concept, that's the concept, and basically the attack of it is you get, you got, you're barring your finger, right across here, the top two strings of the pattern, and you're going to be bending on the G string to match the pitch of the B string. Through most of it, and that's going to be your uh, rhythmic dictation, pretty much. It's going to set the tone for uh, what type of rhythmic values you're going to be doing through your soloing. So, But he does his a lot varied and it makes and he mixes it up so it's going to sound a lot like this and that's one of his stock riffs that he uses a lot a lot a lot 
And another one of his stock riffs that he uses is basically the same concept. It does the same rhythmic value with the dictation stuff. He doesn't do it quite as often as he does his bending one. Uh, but he still does this one quite a bit where he lay your fingers across like that again, but you're going to be doing like a tritone up there for like a bluesy sound. And you're going to be playing uh, the A flat and the D. And you're just going to be doing the rhythmic stuff like you were doing with the bending, except with this riff. So it's going to sound a lot like... And he usually follows that one up with this kind of neat little hammer-on pull-off kind of lick, walk down the blue scale type of thing, uh, like this. This is how most of his solos usually... This is kind of what happens in his solos a lot. He does this. Then he moves on. I kind of went a little bit ahead of myself there, but did you hear the hammer-on pull-off part, the little rundown, the kind of the... the uh, type of thing. It's just walking down the scale while adding in... Uh, the key to that, though, is when you're walking down the scale, you have to bend up that E to an F. It, that's really the sound. I'm sorry, that was uh, my brain farted for a second. Uh, that's really what gives it the sound while you're doing the walk down. Gives it kind of that bluesy feel, hence the blues notes. And the other thing, an another one of his stock riffs is this one. The rhythmic value is a little bit different because he's not constantly just strumming down. He's kind of, uh, every time he hits this up double stop right here, he doesn't strum it, he just until he goes back down to the uh, the root note. But that's the one he strums, so it's it's gonna sound kinda like this. Type of feel. And then uh, after that happens. He'll, he'll kind of do this cool little walk down the scale, add in the flat five, kind of like he was doing up here, but same uh, same idea down here. So after he does it, he'll do that, and then he'll usually walk back up and then do, uh, he'll mix up the walk up a little bit, with, and then he'll do this neat little bend thing and then back down to the root note and it kind of sounds a little bit like this. Here's the walk down part. And then he'll... And that's really like his stock shit and, and there's some other things he does differently but th those are like his main go-to's and he just mixes it up a lot during his soloing and he'll, he'll, he'll change the key sometimes and all you really have to do is mix those elements in a way that sounds good to your own ear and then you'll just be right on top of it. Extra fun. That last little thing he usually does at the end of his solo sometimes. It's little six things that he does. Uh, it's major. He does major six from from uh, after moving up the scale to the four chord. He'll or the four chord pattern area. Because remember.
remember the original key would be right here. But he moved up to here. And after he does this, then he'll start doing major six a walk down like this. He'll do. Uh, sometimes he doesn't do it from there, sometimes he starts from right here. But that's usually how he ends his solos. Ah, it's just, it's just an idea. It's just a total concept thing. Once you kind of grasp what he, he's doing, it's uh, a lot of fun from there, man. mistakes like I did do on this video it's cool it's easy to rectify him because fuck he's just wanking why can't you wank and make mistakes <laughs>